Hello once again, I'm Extra Life. Welcome back to the bench. Last time we worked on adding some analog output to our digital sequencer, and today I'd like to add some visual feedback to that interface. So we're gonna have a play around with this seven segment display and see what we can see. The way that these seven segment displays work is pretty simple. Each of the segments of each of the digits has a little LED inside it with a little diffuser screen. And if we connect it to the battery with a resistor in series, it illuminates. If we pass a current through that LED, it illuminates that segment independent of the others. These displays come in a couple different types. Although they look identical here, these two actually have very different pinouts, and you can see this one has one pin for each segment of the display, while this has many fewer. And that's because this display is wired with one pin for each segment, and this one has many of them in common. So if we connect them, you can see that each digit lights up the same at the same time. Now, it might seem impossible to use this at first, although it is actually convenient because it means our circuit board can be less complicated and has fewer connections we have to be a little bit clever about how we use it. And in order to make this work so that we can display different numbers at the same time, we're gonna take advantage of a trick called multiplexing. But before we get into that, let's hook this up to our Arduino and make it light up from software. Right now, the Arduino is just looping through each of these outputs, turning them off and on one by one. This is a common anode display, meaning that you apply the voltage for each digit and then sync the current through a resistor for each of the segments. So if we move where we're applying the voltage, we can see a different digit light up. We can connect all three digits at once, but when we do that, each one is not very bright. So we would need to change the value of the resistors and also use an input that can sync more current. However, this begins to consume a lot of pins on the Arduino and doesn't enable us to control each segment individually the way that we'd like to. So we're going to use this IO expander chip to allow us to control each segment individually all the time. This is an I.O. expander for microchip, and it's an MCP23S17. And like the digital to analog converter that we looked at last time, it has some serial pins to interface with the Arduino power and ground, but it also has eight pins on each side of additional digital input or output that can be accessed by the microcontroller over the serial interface. Awesome. Now we can individually address the segments of the seven segment display from the microcontroller. And three of the digital Arduino pins are each responsible for one of the digits of the display. Each segment is wired to a separate pin of the input output expander. By using a binary data structure called a truth table, we can tell our circuit which segments of the display to turn on and off for each digit meaning we can now count from 0 to 9 on each digit. With this arrangement, however, we can only power on one of the digits at a time or else we'll get duplicate segments lit up across multiple digits. So we'll take advantage of an effect called persistence of vision and rapidly power these in quick succession to create the illusion that they are all on at the same time, and this is called multiplexing. Now we have some control over the rate at which we multiplex this display. Each segment is only on independent of one another, but as we increase the rate at which they change, we begin to approach the limits of human vision or the frame rate of a camera. And from our perspective, we observe the phenomenon of the display being continuously lit with all of the digits on at the same time. Now, of course, each digit is only on for a third of the amount that it would be if it were continuously lit, so our eyeballs are only receiving one third of that number of photons. So we need to compensate by increasing the brightness 
So I've substituted some lower resistance values right here. But you can see, we are now able to continuously display a three digit number using only a handful of in-out pins, three for the serial communication and one for each digit of the display. We also have analog control over a parameter within the Arduino, so we can use this to do something more interesting, like controlling the pitch of the sequencer. I've programmed the Arduino so that it'll divide the output range into 88 steps and show that number on the display. That's the same number of keys on a piano, so we should get some kind of musical scale out of the synthesizer. Let's find out. Well, that's pretty interesting. We can play a scale and we can see what note we're outputting, but it's not exactly musical yet. What we need to do is calibrate the output so that it matches some reference. We could use our ears and listen to the oscillator as it produces a sound. We could use something like an electronic tuner to figure out precisely what frequency it's outputting. But both of those methods depend on the oscillator being perfectly calibrated. Really, there's a voltage reference standard for Eurorack that we can refer to already, and it's one volt per octave. So what we can do is hook up the output of the sequencer to a digital multimeter and check that for every 12 notes that we increment, we're getting one volt difference in the output. But I won't bore you with the details of that. I'll try and get it done between now and the next video. But as you can see, we're rapidly approaching the limits of what we can reasonably fit on a single breadboard. So next time, I think we'll take a look at some alternate prototyping methods. See you then.